Have you ever really wanted to celebrate with fireworks, but you know they're really dangerous and you don't want things to go horribly wrong and you don't want to burn yourself? What do you do? You can make them in hopscotch. You can even customize their colors, shapes, and sizes. I'm going to make a firework project and explain each step as I go. You can listen and learn, and then I'll tell you when to pause and write your own code. If you get stuck or confused, don't worry. Just tap the video to pause it, and then hit the back arrow to rewind. You'll probably want to do this a few times, so no worries. First, I'm going to choose the object that will serve as the center of my firework display. I'm going to tap the gray plus button at the bottom of the screen to add the object. I want to use a circle shape, so I'll scroll over to find this object. Okay, I see I have the circle at the center of my stage and I'm ready to write some code. So I'll tap on the circle and then tap add code. This opens up the editor or the place where I'll write the code. The code I write will tell the object what to do and when to do it. So first I have to choose the when to do it part. And all of these magenta blocks that you see here are when blocks and they do just that. Since I want to make the circle invisible at the beginning of the game, I'm going to choose a when the game starts block. Notice how a blinking turquoise box is now inside the magenta when block and a new keyboard has opened. This is where I'll write the code to tell the object what to do. To make the circle invisible, I'll scroll until I find the green set invisibility block and tap it to add it to my code. I'm going to type in 100 so that my circle will be 100% invisible, which is what I want. So now I've written a rule for the circle that you can read right here. When the game starts, set invisibility of the circle to 100%. Great. I'm going to check my work by tapping the triangle in the upper right corner, which is the play button. Hmm, nothing happens and that's great. When the game started, the circle became invisible, which is exactly what I programmed. So let's add more to this project. I'll go back to my code by tapping the pencil in the upper right corner of this project. Now before I go on, tap the video to pause it and add an object and add this code to your project. Take time to make sure that your code matches mine. If you're confused, no worries. Just tap the back arrow to rewind and watch again. Now it's time to start working on the fireworks. Fireworks are made up of tiny little explosions, which we can replicate with tiny little circles. So I need to have hundreds of tiny little circles appear on my screen. I could draw each one individually, but I want to let you in on a secret. Programmers are really lazy. If we can avoid doing the same thing twice, we do. In this case, I can use the single circle object I already have and clone it to create as many identical circles as I want. So to do this, I'm going to tap under the green set invisibility block and inside the bottom of the magenta when game starts container. Then I'll scroll until I find the blue create a clone block and tap it to add it to my co code. This will make one copy or clone of the circle. But fireworks are made of a lot of circles. To solve this, I can use a blue repeat block. I'll add it to my code and then type 300 into the bubble. Then I'll press down on the three little lines on the right side of the create a clone block and drag it inside the repeat block. This code means that the circle will be cloned 300 times. Woohoo! Pause here and add this to your code. Now I have a lot of fireworks made and ready to go, but I want to decide when exactly they're going to appear. I want to be able to tap the screen and make fireworks, which means I need a new when. So in the white space below the when the game starts block, I'll tap to pull up the when's keyboard. I'll choose the is tapped block. Great. So I want the fireworks to appear when and where my finger taps the screen. There's a red block called set position that I can use to make something happen in a specific place. I'll add this red block to my code. 
And instead of adding a specific number to this first bubble, I'll scroll until I find the yellow last touch X block. I'll add it to my code. In the second bubble, I'll find the yellow last touch Y block and add it to my code. So now this code tells the fireworks to start at the last place I touched on the screen, according to the position of my finger on the screen's X axis, which is left to right, and Y axis, which is up and down. Pause here and add this to your code. Great. So we have a few more steps to prepare the fireworks. First, let's give them some color. I can do this by changing the color of the circle. I'll tap under the set position block and add a green set color block. I can choose any color I want, but since I like multicolored fireworks the best, I'll choose the colorful random color block from the keyboard. Now my fireworks will all be different colors when they explode. Perfect. Pause here and add this to your code. Okay. The next step I need to do is to make the fireworks explode in all different directions. I'll tap under the set color block inside the when iPad is tapped block to add code that turns the circles facing different directions. I'll find a red set angle block. And instead of typing in a specific number by which the circle should turn, I want them to turn in all different amounts. And I can use random to do this. So I'll scroll right until I see the purple random block and add it to set angle. I'll scroll back to the numbers keyboard and type zero into the first bubble. I'll press check, then type 360 in the second bubble. This means that each circle will turn by some random number between zero and 360 degrees. Great. Pause here and add this block to your code. Okay, now the last couple of steps before trying it out. Remember how I initially made the circle invisible? I want to make it and its clones visible when I tap the screen. I'll tap under the set angle block at the bottom inside this when block. Then I'll find a green set invisibility block. I'll type zero into the bubble and then press check. Now my fireworks will be 0% invisible, which means they'll be visible. Finally, I want to make my fireworks burst out from wherever I tap on the screen, which means that they need to move. I'll tap under the green set invisibility block, then I'll add a red move forward block. Again, I don't want all the clones to do exactly the same thing. So remember what we use for that? That's right, it's random. I'll scroll right and add a purple random block. I'll scroll left to the numbers keyboard, type zero into the first bubble, press check, and then I'll type 200 into the second bubble. I'll press check again. Great. Now, are you ready to see what I coded? I'm gonna press play and see what happens. Nice. Everywhere I tap the screen, a firework appears, but it's still kind of janky and we'll fix that. But first, before we do that, pause here and add all of this code to your project. Make sure that your code matches mine. If you need to double check something, no prob, just rewind. Okay, now let's make them less janky. When you go to watch fireworks, they burst and then slowly fall down in the sky as they fade. I can make that effect in hopscotch too. If I tap underneath the red move forward block, the blinking box should appear. I'm still inside the when iPad is tapped block. In this space, I will add a red set speed block. I want the fireworks to fall slowly, so I'll type 50 into that bubble. The default speed of an object is 400, so I just slowed the circles down a lot. I'll press check. Now I want to make the circles fall. Since change Y by moves an object up and down, I'll add this red block to my code. And since negative numbers make objects move down, I'll type minus 50 into the bubble. Okay, I'm gonna play it to see if it works. Cool, it does. Pause here to add this code, then play it to make sure it works. Okay, so now let's give the fireworks a little more pop by making them shoot out smaller and faster. I'll carefully scroll up to the top of the code 
and tap inside at the top of the magenta when iPad is tapped block above the red set position block. I'll add two blocks here. First, a green set size, size block. I'll set it to 25% so the circles are a quarter as big. Second, I'll add a red set speed block. I'll type 1000 into this bubble and press check. This will make the fireworks really explode when I tap the screen. Okay, I'm going to play it and check it out. Nice. Now pause here and add this code to your project. Make sure you are really careful when scrolling up so you don't accidentally move your code blocks around and press play to try it out. You can adjust the amount you set size by to customize your fireworks. Well, okay, if your fireworks are as amazing as mine, you could totally stop here. But if you wanna keep going, I can show you a couple more things to make your fireworks even more realistic. Now, think about the last fireworks you saw. One thing that is true about almost all fireworks is that they happen at night. So I wanna change the color of my background to make it look like it's nighttime. I can do this by drawing a really big dark line in the background, so big and wide it covers the whole screen. So to do this, I'm gonna add a new object that draws a background. I'm gonna tap the X to get out of this code and then tap the gray plus button on the bottom of the screen to get a new object. I'm gonna choose a text object and leave it blank. Just press the check mark. Now I need to double tap to give that text object some code. Since I want the background to appear right when the game starts, I'll choose the game starts when block. To draw a big black line in the background, I'm gonna scroll until I find the purple draw a trail block. I want the circle object to draw a line or trail so wide that it covers the screen. So I'll tap that first bubble and choose the color black. And to make the line really big, I'll type 3000 into the width bubble, which is wider than the screen. Then I'll tap inside the bubble on the red move forward block and type one. This code tells the circle to move forward one while drawing a line behind it that is 3000 wide, which will take up the whole screen. I'm gonna press play to make sure it works. All right, the background is black now. Pause here and add this code to your project. Okay, folks, I'm gonna show you the final trick, which is to make the fireworks disappear once they fall. I'm going to tap the X in the upper left-hand corner to close out of this text object's code and go back to the stage. Then I'll select the circle again and double tap to get in, into its code. I'll carefully scroll down to the bottom of the code and tap at the bottom inside of the magenta when iPad is tapped block and below the red change Y by Y block. Then I'll add a green set invisibility block and type 100 into the bubble, which will make all the little circle clones become 100% invisible after they explode. I'll play the code now to see how it looks. Wow, that looks great. Okay, now I'm gonna get really deep here because real fireworks don't just disappear all at once. They slowly fade away after they've exploded. And I can do this in hopscotch. Pause here and add this to your code. Okay now, we know that hopscotch fireworks start out as invisible and then when you tap the iPad, the clones become visible and explode. So we need to find a when block that triggers based on when the fireworks or circle clones become visible. So back in the editor, I need to get a new when block. I'll tap in the white space below the last when block to pull up the when's keyboard. Then I'll scroll until I find the conditional when's. They have math symbols on them. I'll tap the magenta equals sign when block because I wanna make a block that says when the clone's invisibility equals zero, do something. In this first bubble, I want to refer to the clone's invisibility. So I'll tap the first circle, 
then scroll until I find the yellow invisibility as a percentage block in the keyboard. And then I'll tap and add it to the first bubble. Then I'll type zero into the second bubble. And so now I've made a when block that says when this clone's invisibility is zero, do something. Since I want to use this when block to change the visibility of the firework so it looks like they're fading away or becoming more and more invisible. So I'm going to make the fireworks fade from 0% invisible to 100% invisible. This means they'll fade from visible to invisible. I'll scroll until I find a blue repeat block and type 50 to make it repeat 50 times. Then I'll tap inside the repeat block and add a green set invisibility block. Then each time this code runs, I will increase the clone's invisibility just a tiny bit until it gets to be completely invisible. So instead of setting the invisibility to just one number, I'll scroll right and tap a purple add block. For the first bubble, I'll scroll until I find the yellow invisibility as a percentage block. This represents the clone's invisibility at any moment. Then I'll type the number two in the second bubble. Now this code says that when the firework becomes visible, its invisibility should slowly grow to 100%, which means you won't be able to see it anymore at all. So now I'll press play because it's time to celebrate. Woohoo! So fancy. Pause here and add this last bit of code to your project. Make sure yours matches mine. Check it and celebrate. Whoa, how cool is that? These fireworks look pretty awesome. Now that you know how, you can set off fireworks for New Year's Eve, Independence Day, your birthday, when you meet a cute dog, whenever you want. And the best part, these fireworks won't set your lawn on fire. Happy hopscotching.